classes are being chosen. Uh, Kalento, really proficient with all kinds of decks, but he's going to lead off with his Druid, as will Dark Wanix, who's super confident, wow. and he will get double Innervase to start off the series. Wow, that's, that is... <laughs> you, you can't get a much better start than seeing two Innervates in your hand. And this is actually sort of interesting. Kalento has chosen to go with, with Haunted Creeper in his Druid deck, which I actually kind of like. It helps you get a lot of pressure on the board for cards like Savage Roar. Um, and it, it, it kind of, as you were touching on earlier, it fits in the same vein as Harvest Golem. It's just a minion that's kind of tough to deal with and starts to put out a little bit of pressure. And at the same time, uh. it also, oh, but look at this. <laughs> Dark Fox has got a haunted spider of his, I can't remember this na the name. Haunted, haunted it's Creeper, like, right? Haunted it, Creeper. It, it, it is the spider, the ugly spider, whatever you want to call it. I understand exactly what you're talking about the moment you say it. Uh, you know, I was oh. going to say also that this seems to be very reminiscent of a token druid deck because I was even overhearing some of the Cloud9 guys saying that they really think that Spoken Spider works well in the Token Druid. And with that Arden Squire, I think it's confirmed. Wow. And I think it's interesting that they're mirroring each other almost with these kinds of cards. The Arden Squire top deck from Dark Wanix. Yep. And now he's thinking, does he want to clear the shield or does he want to go for the face? This is the, these are the decisions that Dark Wanix is often faced with. And he's very methodical and takes his time when he's looking into these sorts of decks. He, there's no reason for him to rush because he knows he's got 90 seconds. Even if he's not going to use that time on this turn... He's thinking about what he's going to do next turn as well, so it gives him more time to think. It ends up giving him more time to uh, to, to plan out his coming turns, and that's something that's very important in this game, because most of the mistakes you make are because you made them in haste. You didn't have enough time to think, and that's where the rope comes into effect, is, is, it, is it cuts the amount of time you have to think. So uh, sure, sure. when he takes his time this way, it's not always because he's thinking about this turn, he's thinking about how the next couple of turns pan out. So uh, expect him to take his time. It's the kind of player he is. And now looking on the other side of the board, uh, this... I mean, Dark Wanix's hand has gotten depleted. That Argent Squire is probably the worst draw in his deck when he's got two Innervates in his opening hand. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Kalento's really hoping to pick one of those mid-drops. Yeah, Kalento's faced with some pretty tough decisions here now. This 1-1's one -one not going to be getting anything done. Um, does he want to coin the Harvest Golem? If he coins the Harvest Golem, he's got pretty much nothing to do on three. Uh, the Haunted uh, Spider, Haunted Creeper, is not very strong here. It's just going to get picked off by the Harvest Golem and then chewed apart. So uh, it, it's not really the strongest plays in the world. I actually was just about to talk about Wrath. Wrath and then attack the golem with the one one. I think is probably his his uh his best plan here. It's not exciting by any means, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see him draw a card there either. But he just wants to get stuff off the board so he can start playing the way for his good minions. Sure, and I think he recognizes immediately that in these kinds of mirror matches, the board the board advantage or board um, development is king, right? Whoever's the one right. being able to control it, uh, being able to kind of continue to advance, and then you use a removal as a way to continue sneaking damage while being able to put your opponent at a disadvantage is the way that you kind of swing it. And you, you recognize the Spectral Spider, or excuse me, the Haunted Creeper. It's going to take a while for me to adjust. When you see the Spectral Spider, oh, God, I just did it again. You know exactly what kind of deck <laughs> you're facing up against. I'm going to be doing this all day long, Honorable. I'm sorry you're sorry. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. I'll be here all day. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> so yeah, swipe coming in the hand was not the best draw, but I'll tell you what is a good draw, and it's ancient allure. Right. So, Next turn is pretty much locked down. Yeah. So, something. Do something this, one, this is sort of a weird turn, um, because I can actually see him swiping here. It's a very unexciting swipe, but it it's just kind of getting the job done. Honestly, you just you you just want to keep the board clean and keep going for it. But he's gonna he's gonna choose to save the swipe later on. He's anticipating being able to get more value out of this. Like when this Harvest Golem dies and he can swipe something like an Azure Drake or maybe your Keeper of the Grove. Uh, and Black Knight coming into the hand, that's not going to be doing work in this matchup, I can tell you that, because I don't know that these players are going to be taunting, I don't think. Yeah, only no. in like a, a sign of desperation when you know your opponent is probably going to do something you need to stall them. Uh, usually you shoot it for the call to be able to pressure, get favorable trades right off the bat. Uh, and again, Dark Wanax already presented with a, a dilemma, but I think Ancient of Lore is just too good to push it on turn five in the yeah. mirror, especially if the board's not imposing. Uh, even if he has the removal, he still has to sacrifice a little bit into yeah. it, which you can kind of climb back, and you're downing cards, so I think this is the way you fight back. Something it. else to note with this Innervate on the Ancient of Lore, this isn't like a huge deal, but if he Innervates Ancient of Lore here, and he draws into another Ancient of Lore, he's got his turn seven as well. If he chooses uh, to hold the Ancient of Lore and he draws the other Ancient of Lore, he's going to get stuck with one of them in his hand. That's, something, that's a position he doesn't want to be in. Um, and I said neither of these players have been taunting, and of course, right as I say that, they both draw <laughs> yeah, <laughs> two of the claws close. to give them up to the taunt. <laughs> but I don't think it's going to be happening. He just wants to keep pushing for the board. Um, I'm, I'm liking his attacks here. Uh, he's at least got to clear the shield so your opponent gets a lot less value out of it in case they have something like Defender of Argus, or in case they choose to use something like Savage War. Not exactly something I would expect, but um, potentially threatening. And the question here now is if he wants to use this Harvest Golem to attack this 1-1, one, one, because it's kind of opening you to swipe a little bit. Um, 
And at the same time, it's like, you know, do you, is, is two damage on the face worth more than clearing this 1-1? And that's a tough spot to be in. And honestly, in this spot, I would prefer to see him attack the face. It's not like a big deal, really? but uh, this Argent Squire, it's going to be getting in a point of damage almost no matter what. And it's hard for your opponent to not be able to manipulate how a swipe sets up this turn if you take a look. If the one one like if he crashed into this one one, he can attack the harvest golem, swipe the keeper of the grove, and use hero power. So he's gonna be able to chew apart his board no matter what. And so all he's sacrificing is two extra points of damage, I think, if he chooses to to not attack the face. So that's so you're exactly anticipating the Argent Squire attacking into it anyways, in which right. case you can get the two damage in. Right. Because he can't just leave the Argent Squire right. there because it's just gonna get chewed apart. So he wants to get some sort of value out of it. That's a really high level analysis because the way I was thinking about at face value was, well, I don't want this Argent Squire if he has some way to clear to kill off the two one damage going and get efficient trigger that way. But this is assuming Kalento knows his opponent. Uh, a Dark Wanix is apparently on Cloud Nine, which has been messaged to us like live, hot, fresh off the presses. I it says curse, but I'm being told that Dark Wanix is on Cloud Nine. Oh, or is it curse? I'm pretty what, sure. What's going on? I'm almost 100 percent positive it's still curse. It's, I, that's what I thought, but someone's like trolling me right now, messaging he's on cloud nine. All right, okay, well, I, that was my mistake. I apologize, and I would know because I, <laughs> he was going. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. All right, we're being we're being fed kind of mis mis misinformation here. I'm kind of getting flustered and embarrassed here. Adam, you guys saved me. Pull me out. Of this. Just go. You say you say some dumb stuff when you're casting. Let me tell you All that. Right. Okay. Well, I take that back. Anyways, anyways, now that that's over, uh, Dark Wanix, he does have the. Uh, Option to, to go for that swipe and go for and try to clear more of the board. Um, that's kind of what this haunted creeper does you know represent. What? It's really difficult to kind of go for that full board. Clear. I really like playing the Argent Commander here and just crashing to the face for ten points of damage. Of course you do. Well, look at it. You, you're threatening a savage war at that point. Like think about the message it sends to your opponent when you make an aggressive play like that. They're like, well, I have to attack his minions now. And so now he's effectively giving all his minions taunt without giving any of his minions taunt. And that's not Dark Chronic's style, but I think that's what he's gonna do. Oh yes! <laughs> I like it. All right, so it's it's a bluff to see what Dark want. Uh, see how Kalento's going to respond to it immediately. He does have a couple of options. Oh, a Force of Nature pickup, so he does allow him to spread out his damage. He also has the option to use Savage Roar right now if he wants to go for a clear, but that's a little excessive as well. This spot is great actually because now your opponent, your opponent like has to clear your minions. They have to be worried about Savage Roar, and this sets up your swipe perfectly the next turn. That's right, because everything's going to be trading in anyways, and then there's going to be one health minions. The swipe will take care of everything as well. Dark Onyx showing that he's been putting in a lot of practice on uh, choosing cool. his aggressive. This is cool. It's this a very cool move. Yeah, this is something that uh, I was talking about a lot at Fight Night uh, when I first met him, is, as I'd just seen him play a lot, and he understands a lot about what you're doing and what it says to your opponent. Uh, and it, it, that's coming into play from his chess background. Is, his, he knows that when he makes certain plays, it sends a message to your opponent. And against someone like Kalento, he knows that Kalento is going to think about these things. So this is something that he can do. Against someone that he might anticipate being a weaker opponent, I imagine he wouldn't be making this play. Because his opponent may just be like, oh, okay, great. I'm just going to attack you right back. And then he's like, dang it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's cool. You just see that this kind of power moves exist. To, it's, it's essentially bluffing and seeing what your opponent's going to be able to respond to. Wow, look. And see how Kalento is going to respond. He's on the rope. He has to make a decision very quick. I... Does it feel like the rope got shorter to you? Uh, the rope always feel like it's never long enough. And I'm not even talking about just Hearthstone. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's see Let's see what uh, Dark Wanix is able to pull out from here. He, again, it sets up the good swipe. He's able to kind of respond immediately to it. Oh, did, there, did he miss an attack? Well, I missed two points of damage. Oh, because did he? Of, because of the oh, my goodness. Get in the last attack. Wow. Yeah. That's, well, I don't know if that's going to be really of immediate consequence, but... At the same time, it, I think uh, I think Kalento realizes that you know there's going to be a big turns coming in from Dark Wanix because the swipe's going to come out. He's going to be able to replace it immediately with the Harvest Golem or even the Haunted Creeper as well. Wow, look at that swipe. That's value. Still at 30 HP, and he's got a slightly better board presence. Kalento gets a chance to take initiative this turn, and wow, Azure Drake's not a bad draw at all. Um, but man, he's going to be losing his Harvest Golem. Dark Wanix has got a couple of really strong plays in his hand. And Colento actually, if he ends up taunting in this matchup, he's going to find himself in a really bad spot. But at 13 HP, this might be one of those games where, he has, where he's forced to taunt. He may not have another option. And wow, look at this Innervate draw. Do you charge here or do you taunt? Hmm. Because if you charge, you kind of make yourself vulnerable to Keeper of the Grove. Yeah, that is true. But then you still have the Azure Drake out there, and then what can you do with the remaining mana that he has? He has 8 mana, right? Right. And then he wants this... 
he will he want that's true he would want to put any kind of any minions to stick out because if he wants to stay consistent with his decisions previously he kind of shows that he has the combo or some way to kind of end the game in which case i think you want to be able to pressure as much oh, as you can oh no this black knight's gonna get value wow, though oh this is bad news for kalento i think i think that taunting is the right play but this is one of those reasons why black knight is in my opinion one of the best legendaries in the game because this is six points of damage and a four five body and that is nothing to be trifled with and now kind of consistent with going with darkwanix's plan earlier when he's playing all these sticky minions he's kind of sending the same image like hey i've got savage roar yeah uh, the, again these are so hard to remove his opponent will have to have something like swipe in order to kind of get for a really convenient clear yep and wow look at eight points of damage of charge value you can just keep going for the face Oh, well, the Vile Teacher came here when it's a little bit... Uh, when the battle's already kind of starting, you need things like Power of the Wild to kind of continue to synergize with it. So from here, does Clento feel like he has to use something like Savage Roar in order to get rid of this board? I don't, God, this is tough. I mean, Savage Roar doesn't even really get rid... It doesn't really do anything else that you would normally be doing. Like, if you kill the Spider, you put, you're putting more power on the board. If you kill the Harvest Golem, you're taking two points of damage, and there's still a 2-1. He needed something like Swipe this turn, I think, to, to be in the game. Well, there's no way to draw it immediately. So I, I think the Savage Roar is what he has to do here. It's, <sighs> it's not pretty, though, whatsoever, because even if you Savage Roar, you kind of want to go for a commitment with other stuff. Or you can just kind of play with your eyes closed and hope that your opponent doesn't have it, but that, that's <laughs> even just more riskier. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's just what you got to do, which is... I, as much as I hate to say it, I think this is the right play, but uh, that's going to do it, because that is 12 points of damage. Coming out from Darkwanix's turn, he's going to take game one. I loved his druid play of the 10 to the face, man. There was just there was just nothing else to do as far as I was concerned. I was like, man, you got 10 points of damage. Let's do this. And there you go. Druid rearing its ugly head. In game one. That's going to do it. And so it looks like for these players, let's see what Kalento chose to go with. All right, it is the Paladin. It is the Paladin, and he is playing well, Humility, so it looks like it might be reminiscent of more of what Kalento's style is, maybe a little bit faster than what Ekop's playing. Kalento, the guy who kind of made that recent mid-range Paladin to climb to number one legend EU in a midst where people consider Paladin to be one of the worst classes in the game. Uh, but he also could be retooling it. You know, maybe he's not playing the Knife Juggers, maybe he's not playing specific cards in his deck that he, he really likes. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how things go. And that's kind of what makes it really cool about this tournament format like we've talked about. You know, the Paladin normally kind of struggles. But if you have a ban where you can kind of have a tournament format as well to kind of pick its weaknesses and strengths according to what you want, I think Paladin could be pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to agree with that analysis. I think you're, I think you're spot on. And uh, look at this curve that Darkwanix has got. Turn three big game hunter. Nice. He's got to be excited about <laughs> that. That's a uh, four power uh, minion. Sure, sure. Get the damage in while you can, right? Token Druid to the face. <laughs> Now let me let me ask you this: How important is it to clear your own shield so your opponent can't do something like Blood Knight? You do you think it's important, or do you think the damage is worth more? I mean, Blood Knight is so situational. It's one of those things that you're stupid, you're, you're smart until you look stupid, right? And I think <laughs> you have to kind of you have. To, that sounds really like an obvious statement, but I think you kind of play into making your opponent have it as opposed to playing around too much. This is not arena. This is constructed. Uh, and in arena, I think that's a legitimate concern sometimes if you feel right. like you have to trade it up for it. But in this scenario, I think you can play a little bit more aggressively, make those decisions. Yeah, I can. I can agree with that. You kind of hit my. You kind of nailed my life's philosophy there. You're a genius until you're an idiot. I'm an idiot really often. <laughs> um, let me let me ask you this: How much merit do you think there is to playing big game hunter this turn since consecration is available? I think if if you kind of get an indication, he hero powered twice in a row. It's very clear that it's not going. To be an aggressive paladin, even though it's not even really in Kalento's MO, he doesn't really like to play that form of paladin. Uh, I think um, if e any kind of slow version of wow, look at this of a, of a paladin might play something like Ragnaros, and I think you got to save that BGH. Look at that, just keep her the grove and start going for it. And this lets you know he wants to be aggressive. I think I think actually what he wants to do is he wants to play that power of the wild to mm -hmm. give plus one plus one to put the the uh, hunted creeper out of range of consecrate. Ah, oh, yeah, that's that could be a cool way to do it. But now he's got to eat through this uh, Sendin' Shield Master, a golden one at yeah. that. Let you know that Kalento's played a lot of Rogue, for all those guys out there who don't know. He's actually one of the first people who popularized uh, Miracle Rogue. He built a very successful version of it to begin with, and it kind of took off from there. 
Uh, a lot of it had been toyed with to, uh, at first, but he was kind of the guy who made the first reasonable version that had a lot of success. So if you guys hate Miracle Row, take it up with him. And um, here's another question for you. Do you use the Ardent Squire here, or do you use the Haunted Creeper? Well, I think um, either way, it looks like he has... I, I think, obviously, you don't want to set yourself up for a follow-up Consecrate from your opponent's turn. Um, so that, I think you can absorb some damage and kind of make it really difficult on your opponent, but then at the same time, you set yourself up to lose a lot either way. If you use the Keeper... Uh, and you make some kind of two attack minion that you're trading and you potentially lose everything and be stuck with one ones. Right. Um, so I think keeping the health on the keeper is more preferable and use your hero power to trade. I can get down with that. This also keeps out of range of true silver. That is also true. Very good. Play around all kinds of four drops. Yep. All right, let's see what Kalento is able to respond with. He does have a lot of those mid game creatures that he wants. It's kind of interesting that the Kodo normally would like to come out something, but ah, he picks up something also pretty decent, the Azure Drake. Dakota would have taken out something maybe like a Keeper of the Grove. Usually you kind of aim for that. That's one of the targets that you usually aim for because Druid traditionally doesn't have too many attack, uh, two attack creatures other than maybe the Harvest Golem and its remnants. But I guess with that Spectral Spiders coming out, that's another target you can usually aim it at. Yep. He, actually, he knows his opponent's playing Token too, so I think he's considering playing Equality here, which I'm not opposed to either. But I, I feel like you can get better value out of it just by holding it. But at the same time, he doesn't want to take too much damage. I, I'm a little surprised by this, honestly. I hmm. feel like that's... Yeah, that's that's pretty aggressive. I don't really know how I feel about that. Ooh, I think because is, mm, I'm trying to think in response, like what he could follow. But I think I think you're right. I think he wants to minimize damage. At, ooh, he's BGH a, toying with it. He's anticipating a weak turn five from Dark Onyx. I, I think when he makes that. Oh, it, it will be on turn six to see what Kalento can drop in response. Um, okay. But yeah, I think yeah, he doesn't really expect too much what his opponent does. But Kalento does have a really nice clean drop here. Yep, the Karen. Yeah, you gotta play Karen here. No questions asked. Garrosh is not fit to rule the horde. Black Knight <laughs> is not gonna be getting it done. The Sending Shield Master's already gone. So outside of the combo. Defender of Argus. So he has combo, so Dark Wanus can start pushing here. And then he's oh assuming gosh. his opponent's spending time healing. He's at 15. I didn't realize he'd he had has combo hand. next turn. I didn't even realize he'd innervate in his hand. Oh my gosh! <gasps> wait, 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 wait. Is it over? I think, Already? I think that's game. He has it, no way to kill both minions. no way to do this? Kalento's going to be out just like that? Oh my gosh. And Dark you know what's so, you know what's so poet, poetic about this? I casted a, a tournament about two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago, called the Well Play Cup, where Doc Wanix was kicked out of the tournament off the back of three or four combos of Druid. Whether it was uh, uh, it's innervated on turn 7 or it was on turn 10 and he got like double Savage Ward for 30 damage and he had 30 health. It, like It, it was just like the Gosh. seeming way that Dark Longs would exit out of the tournament and now he's going to be using it to kick Kalento out of game 2. Wow. Unbelievable. And Kalento's going to be really upset when he sees this. Wow! Sunwalker is like a turn late. But that even wouldn't have mattered because he had Black Knight too. Oh, wow. Dark Longs. Unreal. He sees it. He knows it. Yeah. And I think when the Force Nature comes out with the Savage War and the Innervate Galento, he's going to be relegated to his Rogue and see if he can pull out the series with three straight wins. But Dark Wanix has to be feeling like he's on Cloud 9. Uh -huh. Wow. Smart. Maybe, maybe. We'll see what happens in game number three as we're getting ready for the mulligan screens being popped up for you. You're watching WC Qualifier, and is this going to be the second straight 3-0 we're going to witness with these high-level capital players where the scores are not really indicative of how evenly matched these players really are. Yeah, I mean, that's just Hearthstone sometimes. It's, it's like, you know, you, you're going to have to take a little bit of luck to win a tournament like this, especially against such a strong field. But uh, you, you're trying to maximize that with your strong play and your strong preparation coming into it. So, uh, you know, it's not a surprise to see players getting 3-0'd. Um, but, you, you know, it's not a surprise to see players coming back from 0-2 as well. It's just sort of the nature of the game. And uh, I actually, I like keeping Snap here when you're going second against a Druid. It prevents mm -hmm. you from getting just completely blown out by uh, by an early innervate. And at the same time, you also have an extra card, so it's something that you can spare. Like when you're going first, it's a lot harder to keep it than when you're going... I'm sorry, when you're going second, it's a lot harder. It's a lot easier to keep it than when you're going first. And uh, you saw Dark Quantix, he was thinking about mulliganing the Haunted Creeper, which I would have been really surprised by. Because some what, it feels like one of those yeah. cards in this matchup where you're just trying to get in as much damage as you possibly can. And every little bit adds up is sort of the, uh, the moral of the story. Wow, look at Kalento's hand. He's got two guys in the ears. Double at Auctioneer. The first okay. one's really good, but the second one's really bad. Wow, and this is a strong curve from Darkwanix, too. He's got Harvest Golem and Keeper of the Grove. 
So he's going to apply a lot of pressure early on. I wouldn't be surprised to see that Keeper of the Grove go two damage to the face. Hmm. Well, Colonso, uh, he does, at least he does have the Auctioneer, and he is on the coin, so he does have flexibility in that regards. And, uh, you know, he does have stuff to do until then. A lot of times, sometimes in these matchups, one of the worst ways for Rogue to start against Druid, or pretty, well, mostly Druid, just because of the way, the nature of his explosiveness, is just passing and hero powering the first right. two turns. Uh, but he, he has things to do in this respect, so it won't be too bad. Harvest Golem and Spectral Spiders, or the Haunted Creepers, whatever, they're so sticky and so annoying for Rogue to deal with. It, it takes more than the SI7 agent and just the backstab to clear him. Uh, you need to have it, but he does have the Phantom Knives to help him if so he can clear it potentially for the following turns. I'm really actually surprised that he didn't attack this Haunted Creeper twice. And one of the reasons why is because he had the Earthen Ring Farce in his hand, so he could have made it this value, and he could have been setting up this Phantom Knives. He wants to keep the weapon for something else, though. Yeah, I'm just, I'm really surprised. But he doesn't have anything else right now to use it with. I'm really surprised he chose to do that, actually. But if he has his next two turns mapped out with Phantom Knives and the Farseer, then he won't have time to weapon up once again if he's spending time attacking. But I, I don't understand your point, because then he'd be clearing the minions anyways, yeah. in which case he'd be using it. And it's assuming his opponent doesn't respond to it with a Wrath, and all of a sudden you're, you're done, or you're still taking damage. Yeah. I think the rationale might be is that if he's taking damage over the course of turns and exchanging it anyways then he's going to be having two creatures attacking for one damage as opposed to one. Yep. This is actually sort of a tough turn, too. Like, if you Wrath, you don't get to develop. Um, but if you use the Keeper, it opens you up to Phantom Knives, or just even the Dagger Pokes starting to take out these spiders. But I think he's okay with that. He just wants to start getting damage in. So Phantom Knives is going to be taking up a large portion of your opponent's mana this turn. And at the same time, if he chooses to start poking, you're getting in a lot of damage off of these little 1-1s. One so every little bit matters as far as this is concerned. And Colento, he doesn't really have any plays this turn. He's got I mean, Phantom Knives. Sure, I mean, but that's <laughs> that's what I want. I mean, just mean like in terms of options. That's really all he can do is Phantom sure, Knives. Sure. Yeah. If he can't get a Van Cleef out this turn, not reliably, I don't think. But I, he's no. certainly considering it because the opponent just keepered. Well, that's true. He could no, go maybe for I'm just wrong. a Sap. Yeah, oh, he's he he coin Sap Van Cleef. Yep. yep. And this is this is man, this is Kalento. He just he takes these aggressive plays. And this is Take the play, the right? And this is sort of one of the plays I think he needs to make to win. So Darkwanix has got a response to this, but does he want to respond in a defensive way, or does he just want to keep attacking and rely on his opponent to attack his own minions? That's I think true it, because it's, the, the swipe does take out your own board as well. Right. At the same, but you don't want to be paying six life against this deck either. So this is actually kind of a tough turn. Um, I'd be extremely surprised if he chose to use Savage or especially because he just drew the Force mm. of Nature. Yeah. Um, I really like just kind of going for his face here, honestly. <laughs> Let it rip. You've got the damage for it. Like if you're because you're you're representing the exact same thing you were in game one. If you start attacking his face, your opponent realizes they have to kill your minions. And th with the way that this game is planned out, I don't think he thinks his opponent has something like a backstab and SI7 agent. Um, I think he's putting him on somewhere around like Azure Drake, Gadget Zan Auctioneer. So his hand could potentially be a little bit clunky. I wouldn't mind seeing a wrath here for three on this uh, on the Van Cleef kind of preemptively, but Honestly, I think you just push through damage. It's still a tough decision because just a, you don't want to give Miracle any way to damage you per, uh, on a way because you don't want him to race you in any capacity. Uh, and if it, is, it comes to the point where his opponent is on a gadget sand turn with a lot of spells, it could spell trouble for his opponent. But I, I think Wrathing preemptively, just like you mentioned, might right. be the way to go. Just kind of force it really difficult for your opponent to trade. And he can spend his mana playing things like a Farseer anyways if he needs right. to make it really efficient. The other thing too is that if Darkonyx draws like a, a 5 or a 6 drop, he wants to be able to play it next turn. And if he doesn't Wrath now, he's not gonna, he's not going to be able to do that if he gets that draw. So it's something he's planning for as well. Okay. Ooh. okay. Deadly Poison. Let's see, does this, uh, does this Thanos fan of Knives allow him to clear everything? Not everything. Hmm. He's, so he's, he's going to leave him with a 2-1 on the board if he wants to do it that way. This is kind of tough, honestly. Like, I don't mind just slamming an Auctioneer here because you have a second one. This Auctioneer like, clearly got taunt when you slam it. But then is that... Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Because at the point where... But at least the Phantom Knives and the Thanos potentially cycles and it draws you cards as well, and you're still minimizing damage versus yeah. you're still going to be taking a lot of damage in response... I, I like attacking mm. his face and just playing the auctioneer. Honestly, you get in the, you get in the six you get in six points of damage that you wanted from this uh, Van Cleef, and you're you're kind of representing them the same thing to him. Like you're telling him like, hey, I have a lot of damage in my hand that I can put together. And so Darkwanix has to think about how he can respond to that. This is sort of a safe play though. Like I don't this is 
I don't mind this at all, especially because he wants to re-dagger this turn so he can get the poison active. Never mind, he's going to use the poison this turn. Um... An interesting play. Oh my, oh my gosh, he's going oh, all in. He's going all in on the cleave. And he does have a, he does have the Sinister Strike, so he can have a way to start the chain as well. So it's not like the Shadow Step. Usually it's there for emergencies in a pinch if the guy stands in trouble. Oh, an Innervate. Wow. You know what? If Dark <laughs> drew a big game runner here, that would have stopped the yeah. news. But I mean, that would have just been crushing for Colento because I think he's making these really calculated decisions. He says, well, he's been playing his keeper. Uh, you know, he, he doesn't have a way to silence it again because obviously he played the 6-6. Six, six. The best way to respond to that is a second keeper. So he doesn't have the second keeper right off the bat. And I think Colento realizes that this is his best chance to sneak in that damage and use that Shadow Step anyways to get in damage that would have been 6. And you kind of add that to the Van Cleave. So in the end, you don't really trade off that damage if it's going straight to the face. Yeah. Darkwise has got 18 points of damage next turn, by the way. No, but does that matter in the face of some of this gadget sand uh, I, I don't know, but we're gonna we're gonna see if it's gonna matter. Oh, he's going eight to the dome. Wow. Darkwanix has got you know what? I think he's gotta take his he's gotta take a shot here. I think you have to innervate combo. And I think you just attack your opponent and go for the swipe six. Ooh, turn. yeah, because he does that double swipe. Yeah, I think I think you just hope that your opponent can't put together eight points of damage. But I don't know, let's count this. He's got eight in his hand now, so he's got to put his opponent at eight. So he's got to invest at least um, 13 points right. of damage. So that would be... Yeah, you can't clear the board if you're going to put in that much damage to your opponent. So you can at least take out the gadget's hand, though. Yeah, take you can take out damage away. Yep, you can take out the gadget's hand, put 14 on your opponent's face. That's going to leave him at seven, and then you have two swipes. I think that's what you got to do. Okay. I think that's pretty reasonable. I think, you know, eight damage is too easy for Rogue to find, especially if the gadget sand is out and the five mana is live. Yep. In which case, it'd be really easy because he could just chain draw Leroy into a, an SI7 agent, right? Or something yep. like that. Any kind of combination of that. Double this Oh, okay. Um, okay. It's an alternative play. He's going to be short of a mana for his combo. It's a very passive play, yep. too. I actually I, isn't going to be leaving it to chance. I very much dislike this play. Because now he's got to find extra damage to actually finish off his opponent. Well, I think he's hoping his opponent trades his uh, into the. Oh! Whoa! A conceal draw. That is big. That is really big because now he's going to be able to get a lot of draws back into it. He can dig for his Leroy wow. and he'll be able to find a way to end this game in two turns. Kalento may have just gotten his ticket to continue this series and stay alive unless Dark Wanix draws a way to potentially seal the game oh, very oh, soon. Oh, Squire's got to be with a wor one of the worst draws in the deck. Oh, no, because even if he has combo, he's still going to be short one damage. He needs to draw an Innervate or something next turn. Oh, my so, gosh. Yeah, I think he used both Innervates. So I think that unless <laughs> Kalento whiffs, is a massive whiff, and he draws like every single creature not able to draw... I don't think, though. The well, I got bad news <laughs> for Dark Onyx. He is not going to whiff this turn. Wow. Oh, Leroy. Leroy. Yeah, I just think this is over. He's got if he Does he have a... Has he already used both of his innervates now? I, that's what I was wondering. I think no, no, he he's used got one innervate left. Oh, no, he does? Okay, the innervates was a different enough. game. He's, still, he's, still, he's only got 15 points of damage, even if he draws the innervate. That's just game over. There's not a single draw on Dark Onyx's deck that can get him out of this. That is he, un. He has to use his yeah. combo to get out of here, though. He has to use his combo to to clear the board. But at least take care of the gadget sand. Your opponent's gotten all the cards. Well, uh, he has a Leroy. He's already two thirds or plus through his deck. So the chances of him just start even just playing vanilla minions like the like the Azure Drake and the SI7 agents without having the Leroy, they can just whittle you down and you're down. He's down to one wrath. How are you supposed to fight back from that position? <laughs> you don't. Just, you can just scoop him up and go to the next game here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just, I mean, that's done like dinner. <laughs> I think, uh, oh, wow. Like he's, your opponent's hand would have one short, he's one short of lethal at the like, moment. What could your opponent's hand be that isn't relevant here? It's like, say he has Shadow Step, two Preparation, two Blade Flurries, oh. and one other card. Like, what's the other card? I guess another Cold Blood? Yeah, I guess he's playing Second Conceal or something. Like, it, <laughs> That's the thing you're kind of assuming. Please be Second Conceal. And, you know, some weird combination of, like, Perdition's Blade that RDU plays. I don't know. I think it's a little bit of our Dark Quantix's control mindset coming into effect this game. I think he had a really good chance to try to end it, and he didn't take it. And I think that I think it ends up being a mistake at the end of the day. Uh, really, really tough because it seemed like he was able to close out 3-0. And now Kalento, he's staying. 
playing live with the Miracle Rogue. Staying live, and that's a, that's a deck that's so dangerous. Every player feels like they can 3-0 with it. Oh. At this point, uh, what are you going to try to reflect this cycle? Lethal, by the way? Could he have just No, 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 he was, he was one short. He was one short. He was one short. Because what happens was he had Leroy, he had the mana, to, he had the cards to do it, but he didn't have the mana to do it. Okay. Because he didn't have a weapon. He had 12 with Leroy, oh. uh, Eviscerate, and SI7. Um, Wait, but he drew, he drew a second Eviscerate off of the, the serve. Are you sure? I was... Dark Marks? Yeah, he was at nine mana. I, I, I was, I was kind of seeing if there's a way for him to. Okay. Uh, be able well, to I always say he's, he's got to leave the list turn. So yeah. uh, that was just the BM that he was coming in. He was just giving you guys a good show. But we're not, we didn't miss anything, you guys. Don't you, don't you come up with any crazy ideas about that? But wow, Blanc is one of those guys as well. Yep. Well, we're gonna see. I think either way, I think if it's, if your hunter deck's built to beat. Miracle Rogue, that you just lead with the Rogue anyway and try to pick off a free win to conceal sure. that information. You don't want other players knowing how your Hunter's deck built. Because that's one of those games where the mystery, I think, makes a much bigger difference than if your opponent's playing Aggro Rogue or not. And wow, look at this opening hand from Dark Onyx. Yeah, I mean, he's got the gadget stand. He's on the coin. He has uh, he has some good spells to kind of complement everything. Kalinto Mulligan's one card into a gadget stand of his own. <laughs> he Mulligan is conceal as well. Take oh good my trade. gosh. He keeps everything. Wow. And I think um, you know, a sap's a really good keep usually because a lot of people might be wondering what use is it for, but you know, taking away a lot of the tempo with because a lot of times sometimes the, the rogue players they feel like they have to kind of go big with Van Cleef if they don't have anything going on, and you have the sap immediately to respond to it, and then all of a sudden you take a little lot of the momentum away. Okay, so Kalento draws his uh, Leroy and his Cold Blood early, so a lot of damage. Sometimes this matchup doesn't have to even go straight to the Gadget Hand draw. Sometimes you're kind of p uh, picking each other, whittling them down, and all of a sudden the Leroy just ends it on turn 6 or 7 because you have lots of damage combo straight from the hand. Right. You don't even need to draw through your deck. Right, if you can manage to just draw all the right pieces, you don't have to draw it because the whole point of drawing your deck is to get to Leroy and two Shadow Steps. Uh, but sometimes you just draw two Leroy and two Shadow Steps. Yeah. The Miracle. And just whittle them down. A lot of the nuances can come down to some of the attacking and whether or not you attack and re-dagger. But it really does play on your mana curve and whatnot you're plotting out. Dark One is an interesting choice, too. Uh, this Web Lord is an interesting tech that's been put into Miracle Rogues where people who see this card say, oh, it's supposed to counter Miracle Rogues. But SI7 Agents and anything that says combo is not affected by this card because it's, it's not technically a battle cry. You put a gun to Blizzard's head and they say, no, it's not a battle cry because it doesn't say battle cry. It's not in the English language. Combo does not mean battle cry. Uh, and so all of a sudden, if you only have things like one Drake, then you're still able to play these cards really efficiently while your opponent still struggles with right. uh, whether it's aggro, whether it's zoo, whether it's other kind of cards. And that's where it kind of fits in really nicely. Yeah, I was actually sort of surprised the first time that I saw Weblord played and then uh, a backstab. And I was like, wait a minute, that's a battle cry, right? And I was like, oh, no, it's a combo. Got him. <laughs> Same thing with Druids. Same thing with Druids. You know, the, they played the Web Lord, and then they were playing like, uh, you know, like a Keeper of the Grove. I'm like, that's that's not right. It says, oh, it says choose. It's like, okay, Unreal. okay, bro. To borrow a phrase from Crip. <laughs> Got him. Yeah. All of these players have very strong hands. Uh, might I add, almost identical. Really explosive too. Like the Sinister Strikes with the Cold Bloods really racking the damage, and it, it really tilts that mirror, the, the mirror in your favor. Sometimes if you can't activate the Cold Bloods versus having Sinister Strike, but to have both uh, it's, is a way to kind of just really take down your opponent quickly if they're not yeah. careful. This is one of those matches too where sometimes it comes down to like whoever blinks first ends up being at a disadvantage uh, because the other player gets to respond so strong. So they start to get to overdevelop their board. So notice when if, if he chooses to play this SI Seven Agent next turn. Uh, if his opponent doesn't have a response like he does have, which is to poison another SI7 agent, he starts getting the overwhelming good board advantage. So you force your opponent to have something, but th these decks are so dedicated to having stuff that the first person who has to go uh, oftentimes is at a disadvantage. So he, I feel like he's sort of reluctant to play this Earth and Ring Farseer here, believe it or not. Hmm. And, he, and now Dark Onyx, he's thinking about playing the, uh, the Web Lord here, sort of as you were touching on. He wants to not allow his opponent to play an Azure Drake on turn 5. Yeah, and merely mess up the curve. Right. Even if it's at the cost of his own, because he does have ways to kind of follow it up with his own gadget soon. Yep. Uh, Clunto picks up second deadly poison. Oh, you know what else I didn't notice is that uh, Darkwonix actually drew Blood Mage. So now he's got Blood Mage Blade Flurry on the poison. So even ah. if his opponent conceals an auctioneer, he's got a way to uh, 
to sweep the board out. Yep. Right. Very nice, very nice. So he's got the tools to respond. Uh, you know, the Clunto can take this out and play it out as his own SI7 agent, and take out that web lord. And I just kind of, again, just really try to play this game of inches before the game just starts getting way out of control. Because after turn five and turn six, the game starts going crazy with you know, draws or even just ending the game early. So these turns really set up how you're going to be able to play out the next few turns that just end the game. Because this is, this is almost like the moment before the climax, where people kind of say turn five is usually where the game is finally starting. Um, the game can kind of be determined where it's almost coming to an end soon. Yeah, I was just about to say, I think he's considering not using... A the damage on the weblord and just kind of going for his face because it's like does the one four really matter and i'm not sure it does because if you look at his hand he's got 10 he's got 13 points of just direct damage once his leeward gets active so there's only two men away from that and now he's taking his opponent down to 18. And that's a good and this, point and what's this point. one four supposed to do that's actually a really oh, strong deny, play. deny him his own azure drake <laughs> yeah that's a really strong play wow now what does our do he's, he wants to hold this dagger for the Blood Mage Blade Flurry, but now your opponent's put so much pressure onto you that he's sort of sending you the message that, hey, by the way, I don't even need to do that, bro. I'm just going to kill you outright. So now he's got to be thinking about not only how he, if, if, if his card advantage is even important in this game, or is it just more important to try to kill your opponent? And a lot of times when you're this low, at when, you, when I put that in quotation marks, when you're this low, it often isn't because you're not really going to be able to stop that 5 damage. You kind of already consider yourself at 13, yep. in which case you kind of have to go into crisis mode. He's spent so much of his cards, you clearly have the card advantage. You kind of have to respond to your opponent immediately. I think you've got to play uh, mitigation here. Yep. I actually I would like to see the SI7 agent here as well. I don't, I don't like the Blood Mage as much. Oh, unless I, I guess if you're going to do it this way, it's fine. Mm, yeah, uh, either way. I think um, you know, the Weblord also effectively works against him too because if he needs to wait to end the game with Leroy um, yep. he is going to be playing on slightly higher mana curve as well wow look at this just damage to the face he's <laughs> he's he's got lethal next turn he's got 15 points of damage exactly that's right with the Leroy's at six <gasps> and then the Lord. seven could a second web lord stall him out enough oh my gosh as Darkwanix goes for the Gadzin auctioneer play here he's actually is he just dead if he goes for Gadzin Auctioneer? He is. Oh my gosh, he needs to play this web lord or he's going to die. Oh well, my gosh, and that's let's game. Draws. Let's see oh wait, you're right. I think because um, there, I was thinking if there's a way for him to kind of draw into something that can answer it immediately and maybe heal, but you're correct. The only way he could have survived was that web lord and increasing the battle cry cost. Wow, unbelievable. This is just perfect play from Kalento at every step of the way. He calculated his damage exactly on the turn he used Double Poison. From turn no. 5, he had mapped out the rest of the game. And now that game's going to go to Kalento. GG. Wow, wow. I'm, I'm actually really impressed. Yeah, very nice. And again, this is the father of Miracle Road that everyone kind of coins and attributes to. Uh, you know, players like Hyped and a few of the people who kind of made it better into what being understanding. Good guy, Quanix. Yeah, good guy, Dark. All right, so All right, let's cool. head into the mulligans. So let's go into game number one. Rogue versus Hunter. And so far, be, everything uh, looks really standard. Right. Well, no surprises like whatsoever. Days. You know, it, it looks like a really bad opening from Darkwanix, but it's kind of that's kind of a blessing in a certain way because he can't draw go. Unleash the Hounds and Starving Buzzard. So he is playing a mid-range deck. So this could have been what he was trying to avoid. I'm actually really surprised that he's playing this deck and that he chose to not ban Rogue. I find that really interesting, especially because he had Freeze Mage in his lineup too. Mm -hmm. I think maybe he was really. Ooh, or he's going to use tracking off the. Actually, off, I, right off the bat, and he does have the Leroy. Wow. That is not the tracking you want to see, by the way. Huh. Because Explosive Trap is oftentimes a pretty important card in this matchup. It gives you extra charges on the bow. It can help you prevent uh, getting blown up by a Leroy on a key turn as well. Well, it depends if they're attacking with the weapon. A uh, Freezing Trap is usually a better anti Leroy tech, I find, just because it can activate it with just the hero power. They just kind of. Attack and explosive trap uh, pops anyways, but freezing trap you kind of de force a lead right dedication if you can control the board. Right. In which case, ooh, interesting. Right off the bat, club is going to go for a big Van Cleef play. Wow. Look at those mechanics too. He had the. I thought he'd played a four four on it quick. I was like, no. Mm -hmm. But he'd already do done the double click shadow step trick, and he was confident it was coming into play. Can you wow. imagine how frustrating? He has the answer right there. <laughs> the stone tusk bore. <laughs> He's going to get board control. <laughs> There we go. Can you imagine how frustrating it would have been, by the way, if that if the trick didn't work? 
Like if he would, you accidentally misclicked <laughs> and then you somehow got a four four instead because you played the one one right back or something. Yeah. I don't know. And he's like, dang it. Well, you know, he's uh, he's kind of stayed off a lot of damage that Van Cleef was away to just a race. You're not really sure what kind of hunter your opponent's playing. You can't be too sure until, well, sometimes until it's too late, right? You, you see, like, the charges come out, and you're like, oh, God, I, you know, it's too late. Uh, whether you should be mulliganing correctly or holding things like sap. Uh, but now I think Clento is definitely a little, pretty sad about what just happened. Yeah. I mean, he put a lot of investment into that. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Okay. Kalento. So he has he has uh, the preparation conceal for the next turn. Kalento is going to be in a 50-50 very likely next turn because right, the Darkwonix has deadly shot. Unless he makes Honker here, he could ram that in the Blood Mage. And he's got Misha. No, we get some Misha. Misha's not too bad here, though. I, yeah, Misha's definitely really good. It's really bad if your opponent has a backstab. But when I say it's not too bad, what I mean is we're coming from the perspective of complete information. If his opponent has backstab, this is a horrible yeah. thing. But uh, yeah, in this... Current position, this is actually pretty good. But Kalento's going to have two draws to find a backstab if he wants to play the Skadger Saint Auctioneer this turn, which I think I think he's going to. Well, nope, nope, he's not going to. Mm. This is sort of this is sort of the, the thing he does too. He takes his time with this deck, and he, he doesn't find any rush. So he feels like he's not under a lot of pressure. Wow, Savannah High Main. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's, it's a really, really powerful card, but often a card that... Sometimes it's just too slow, assuming your opponent has the sap, because then you just waste six mana. It's essentially the Sassanic. You're never going to have an opportunity to play that Savannah High main for six mana and cleanly be able to set up an execution play. But in this res in this side, where you know your opponent spent a lot of cards getting out the Van Cleef, you're able to nullify that immediately. He's not sitting on that many cards, and he had a pretty weak turn five by just playing a Farseer. I think you must be feeling pr pretty confident if you're Dark Wannix. He's yeah, not coining it out though. Instead, he's going to go for the. I don't know. This is this is a tough position to be in because you don't want to get sapped, but at the same time, this is like one of those turns where your opponent can sap, and it's like not the worst thing in the world for you because you yeah, can just play it just cleanly play the next turn. turn. But yeah. the thing he's thinking about the most is how he gets value out of this Houndmaster because one of the reasons why Miracle oftentimes has an advantage in this matchup is because they can pick apart all of your beasts and you never have time to actually play this card. It just comes down right. to the four three. So I think what's going through his head right here is he just needs to get value out of it right now before that value is just lost. And wow, look, he's sure. even going to play Freezing Trap. Huh. Which okay. means he's going to attack the Blood Mage. Oh my gosh. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so he wants to just go for the full board and be able to burst his opponent. He has Leroy in hand as well. And don't ever underestimate, there's easy ways to get 18 to 20 plus damage uh, yes. in turns 7 and 8 when you draw things like Kill Command. This is a tough turn if you're a Kalento. Well, I think you start to think, chain drawing and see yeah, what he I think, gets. I think you just got to, I mean, you got to rip this. And in Darkwanix, he's not even that sad to see. He wants to see this Earthen Ring Farseer attack is what he really wants to see. Um, I don't know if he's going to get it. But even still, he's got a 50-50 now if he wants to take that to clear out this Auctioneer. But Kalento's drawn another Auctioneer. But I don't even know if this is going to matter because now Darkwanix is putting together so much damage. Like, he's got a Leroy of his own in his hand, and Savannah Jaime is going to come down this turn. That second one's not very good. Mm, yeah, you don't, you don't often have the time or mana or place to be able to play both Savannah High mains. That's not what he didn't necessarily needed. Like things like Kill Command would have been able to extend it, or an Eagle Horn Bow. That way, he can kind of rack in the damage. Leroy with the bow and Hero Power is eleven, and you could kind of count your way down from that point on, which would have been massive. This deadly shot, this deadly oh, shot, geez. could determine so much of how whether or not Columbus is going to be able to take oh, uh, uh, maybe a comeback into this game. <laughs> oh, this is tough. I think mm. I don't know what I would do honestly. I think I would just slam the high main and YOLO it, but. Um, there's certainly a lot of merit to using Deadly Shot here. Oh, he's gonna go for it. Oh! <laughs> that's really, really important because now Colenso won't be able to keep. That's also four damage too. Assuming he was able to remove it, uh, there was a way for him to kind of keep the draws. But now he has to kind of activate that freezing trap either way. Colento's in a very, very tough position. He has fallen very behind on the board, and he's facing down ten points of damage that he. Has, it, it's really tough for him to clear this turn. Like He can't even use the Earthen Ring Farce here because he's already committed to the fact that this has been a freezing trap. So mm. it's hard for him to even put that damage through. Yeah. He needs to draw like Sap like right here. Oh my gosh. Well, he has a preparation okay. to draw something else. He can still draw preparation and Phantom Knives. Right. I'm sorry, and, and Eviscerate or else. Sap. He's got two draws to do it, but they have to be perfect. Mm, Kalento's also out of mana here. He's got to draw the other preparation here. 
He's this gotta draw is second really prep. bad news if you're Calento. Oh man, Shiv, Shiv into it, maybe eviscerate as well. He's the using the ship here eviscerate. because he wants backstab to be live as well. If he, yeah, that is that's also exactly true. he's doing it. Oh, oh he has a backstab. All right, so he keeps the dream alive. Oh, ah, that stings. And he's about to get some more bad news, even though it doesn't matter very much. And I believe that's game. That looks like 10, 16, 18 points of damage. Did he have the opportunity to shadow step as well? I don't. I don't think he did. Draw. I don't think he had. I don't think he really had the. Uh... No, because if he shadow steps, right. he's not gonna have the mana to. He's not gonna have the extra card draw for preparation. And that's gonna do it. Darkwanix is gonna take this in a really close five-game series. Wow, these players have put together.